Hi my tricks. today we're going to focus in on the cochlea, which is a region of the inner ear. If you are following on your textbook, we're on page 168. Now the inner ear has two parts to it, and we're going to just look at the cochlea today, which is this snail shell-shaped structure. Effectively, the cochlea is responsible for our hearing and it's important that we understand the overall structure internally of the cochlea because often this is quite technical and it's quite difficult to imagine without seeing it in a picture or a diagram and then also to be able to explain how it works can be quite technical as well. So let's have a look at the internal structure of the cochlea first. So you will notice in this diagram the cochlea has been um, cut in half um, and you can see that uh, they've sort of uncoiled it slightly so it's not as tightly coiled. Um, and you'll notice some of the other regions from the earlier lessons. Here is our ear canal, there's the tympanic membrane, here is the middle ear with all the ossicles inside of it, and then we have the cochlea at the end. Now at this point we know that our sound waves are going to be traveling down the canal, they're going to go past the ossicles, and the ossicles are going to convert that uh, sound wave into a mechanical movement and that mechanical movement is going to move into the cochlea. Now it's important to understand the structure of the cochlea in that it has two main regions to it. It has a bony labyrinth and a membranous labyrinth. Now what exactly is a labyrinth? It's similar to a maze except that it has one entrance in and one exit out and that there is no um, chance of getting lost in a labyrinth because you follow one direction of a pathway and it will then lead you out. So unlike a maze where you can go left and right and you could possibly get lost, a labyrinth is a continuous pattern that you follow um, and you enter into the structure and then you will exit out of the structure without having to make any decisions about whether turning left or right. And the bony labyrinth is filled with a fluid and so is the membranous labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth actually floats inside of the bony labyrinth. Now the bony labyrinth is filled with something called perilymph and perilymph is the first liquid that will surround the membranous labyrinth. Then we have the membranous labyrinth and that is filled with endolymph. Both of these liquids play a role in transferring the pressure waves that were made earlier by the ossicles through the cochlea so that it can then be converted into a electrical impulse. So how does this labyrinth work and how do we move through the different perilymph and endolymph? So if you look at the diagram and you look at the blue region inside of the cochlea, that is going to be our perilymph. And you will notice that if you follow it all the way along, you can go all the way around the cochlea through it all the way around and come all the way back again and then you can actually leave the inner ear while still remaining in the perilymph. The endolymph is the pink region on the inside over here and that is effectively where you are going to here. Now the reason why you can enter into the perilymph and go all the way around and then exit on the other side is because you don't want something like reverberation, meaning you don't want your sound waves to remain in the ear after you have heard them. It would distort what you hear and it would make it very difficult to hear. To understand how our sound waves are moving through these different layers of um, lymph fluid but also membranes, we need to look at a cross section through the cochlea and so what they've done here in this picture is they have taken the canal and they have cut a cross section through it. So we have a top canal, 
we have a middle canal and a lower canal. You will notice that they have been given names, which is the vestibular canal and the tympanic canal. And these two canals, the one on the top and the bottom, are both filled with perilymph. The more central canal, which in this diagram they're calling the cochlear duct, is what is going to be filled with endolymph. So what exactly happens is when the ossicles beat against the oval window, that is going to create pressure waves, which is going to cause the perilymph in the vestibular canal, which is this top canal, to create pressure waves of movement. That is then going to create movement and stimulate the membrane which is attached to it. That is going to then convert an impulse into the lymph, the endolymph, and it's going to stimulate a structure called the organ of corti. Now this is a very important structure that you need to know. This is what actually converts the mechanical movement and the pressure waves that have been created into an electrical impulse that is then sent to the brain. Now the organ of Corti is made up of these tiny little hair cells that stick up into the endolymph. And they have another membrane sitting just above that. And as that membrane is effectively uh, vibrated backwards and forwards, it stimulates the little hair cells that sit below it. And it creates an impulse. And that impulse is then sent through the auditory nerve. And that is then going to go to the brain. Now any excess vibration is going to move down into the tympanic canal. And so effectively what we are doing is we are um, flowing from one fluid into a membrane, into another fluid, into a membrane, and then out into a fluid once more. So let's just quickly recap exactly what that would look like. If we were to cut the cochlea in half, we have a canal sitting at the top and it is filled with perilymph. Below that, we have our middle canal, and that middle canal is going to be filled with endolymph. And then again, sitting below that, is going to be our third canal, which is going to be filled with perilymph. Now, keeping in mind that these are bony canals that are lined with a membranous layer on the inside, we are going to transfer the pressure wave movement from the perilymph from the perilymph onto a membrane. That membrane is going to reverberate and move and it is going to transfer those movements into the endolymph. Sitting inside the endolymph is the structure which allows us to actually hear, which is called the organ of corti, and that we would see sitting here in the endolymph. The endolymph would now be moving, and because it's moving, and it would move backwards and forwards, that would then stimulate the um, membrane that sits inside of the endolymph, and it would reverberate backwards and forwards, and that creates an electrical impulse that goes to the auditory nerve and then to the brain. Any excess sounds or pressure waves that are not perceived and don't need to be perceived then move from the endolymph, they move through the membrane and back into the outer bony layer where we have the perilymph and that will then leave the ear. This is quite a technical topic and it is quite difficult to explain, being quite limited in this format of explaining over these videos. I am, however, going to make another video where I'm going to focus specifically on how we actually hear in sort of a step-by-step -step process. That video I'm going to focus on specifically for what you would need to cover if you were explaining this in a test and in an exam. 
All we've done right now and all we would like you to know is the overall structure of the ear, in particular um, the inner ear and how the cochlea is structured. If you have any queries or questions on this, please ask your teachers. This is a very technical topic that requires detailed explanation.